Greetings and welcome, I'm Ash, and with 2016 now well and truly over, it is time to engage in one of the most well-renowned of internet traditions, the totally not pointless top 5 list. As such, allow me to show you which games I enjoyed the most throughout this past year and more importantly, which games I plan to continue playing well into 2017 as well. Naturally, all of this is just my opinion and it's based around the games I've actually had a chance to play, so don't be surprised if your favorite is nowhere to be found. Furthermore, the whole ranking business is mostly meaningless because I enjoy all of these games for separate reasons, so don't waste your time arguing why X is better than Y, it's mostly a pointless venture. And with all of these disclaimers now finally out of the way, let's get down to the fun stuff. Number 5. Toho War Warhammer, or as it really should have been called, Toho Warhammer. I'm a big fan of both the Warhammer universe and the Toho War series, so I fully expected I would enjoy Toho War Warhammer as well. But what did come as a surprise is just how perfect this combination ended up being. Unlike our rather boring real world where everyone uses similar technology and fighting styles, the races in Warhammer are about as far removed from each other as it gets. The vampire counts don't use any ranged units and instead swarm enemies with vast undead hordes. The entire Greenskin's quote-unquote battle strategy revolves around taking the biggest rock you can find and smacking the enemy straight across the face. Dwarves, on the other hand, mostly rely on superior technology and well-entrenched defenses in order to compensate for their numbers, and so forth. All of this makes each campaign feel drastically different, and even though you're doing basically the same thing each time, I can't say I've gotten tired of it just yet. Another good thing about Total War Warhammer, and yes, I can already sense the pitchforks being sharpened, is all of the DLC. I haven't bought any of it because I simply cannot justify spending 15 euros for a single race, but luckily I don't have to because they appear in the campaign map for free. I might not be able to play as the Wood Elves or even the Beastmen, but having a constant trickle of new races is a great thing indeed as it keeps Stall War Warhammer fresh and interesting. Combine this with all of the balance updates and dozens of free battle maps released so far, and you've got a strategy game I fully intend to keep playing well into 2017 as well. Number 4. The Witcher 3 Blood and Wine Expansion Okay, so we're only on the second member of this list and I've already started cheating. The Witcher 3 released back in 2015, so technically it really shouldn't belong here. But its latest expansion, Blood and Wine, did arrive in 2016, so that's my excuse. And it is a good excuse given that Blood and Wine is one of the best expansions I've ever seen. The world is vast and interesting, the story kept me constantly going forward until I could physically play no more, and the overall gameplay of The Witcher 3 has been brought to its absolute peak. If this is to be Geralt's final adventure before a much needed retirement, I am glad to say that he has gone out with a bang. In more ways than one. But to understand why I love Blood and Wine so much, you only need to take one look at the various quests you can undertake. There is basically no filler, and even some of the sillier quests out there offer enough of an emotional attachment that I found myself getting invested in the outcome of every single one of them. It is amazing how far a combination of good writing and voice acting can take an RPG. And after playing The Witcher 3, I simply could not get into any of the numerous generic open world games anymore. If the choice is between completing 3-4 minigames ad nauseum or spending hundreds of quality hours with The Witcher 3, there's really not much of a choice at all, is there? Number 3. Dark Souls 3 Dark Souls is my favorite game of all time, and even though I hold a great deal of love for it, I consider Dark Souls 3 to be the better game objectively. Its world is much larger, the monsters are more diverse and dangerous than ever, 
there is a far greater variety of viable weapons and even the PvP imbalance is larger than ever before. As it turns out, slapping dragons around with a mace made out of their bones is quite an enjoyable activity. Well, unless you're the dragon anyway. But all joking aside, I had a ton of fun with Dark Souls 3 and have already managed to beat it twice. And with a brand new piece of DLC coming in the near future, I have a feeling that number will soon become even higher. On a slight side note, it is worth mentioning that the difficulty is greatly over-exaggerated. So if this has kept you away from the series, I would recommend you reconsider. You will spend a lot of time getting your teeth kicked in, have no doubt about that, but with each death you'll be slightly more prepared for the challenges that lie ahead. So just take things nice and easy, don't charge forward like one of those bomb-headed freaks from Serious Sam, and you should be perfectly fine. Number 2. Shadow Tactics Blades of the Shogun Unlike most games on this list, and honestly in general, I've only heard Shadow Tactics about a week before its release. And a good thing I did, because Shadow Tactics is one of the best stealth strategy hybrids I've played in years. The mechanics are solid, the characters are surprisingly engaging, and the Japanese setting is downright beautiful. But perhaps most importantly, the puzzles are so deliciously tricky that I couldn't tear myself from the keyboard until I completed an entire level. There is nothing quite like that moment when you rise victorious after an entire hour of getting shot, stabbed and blown straight off. Shadow Tactics is a fairly niche game however, so I'm fully aware that most of you won't enjoy such a thing. But if you number yourself among those players that enjoy deviously difficult puzzles that will force you to restart over and over again in search of a perfect solution, then you're most likely going to find a pure goldmine in Shadow Tactics. Each level has multiple ways to solve it, each character has a unique skill set, and each and every single new map brings with it new mechanics and features to toy around with. So if you're a fan of the Commando series, or strategy games in general, make sure to give Shadow Tactics a look as well. And number one, as you can probably guess from the thumbnail of this video, is Overwatch. Ever since Valve more or less abandoned Team Fortress 2, I was left without a competitive shooter to play. Call of Duty and Battlefield are a bit too serious and way too random for me, while Counter-Strike requires such a ridiculous amount of dedication that I simply cannot play it for too long without losing my sanity along the way. And then, in the midst of all that darkness, came Overwatch. Given Blizzard's inability to even remotely balance World of Warcraft even after a decade of trying, I must admit I was rather skeptical about Overwatch. But once I finally got my hands on the open beta, I knew this was a game that will consume all of my free time moving forward. So what is it exactly that makes Overwatch so great? Well, besides the obvious stuff such as amazing audiovisual design, the most important factor for me is the character variety. Swapping from Genji to Anna feels like a completely different experience. And then swapping from that to Reinhardt feels even more distinct given that his playstyle is truly unique. What this means is that no matter how skilled you are and no matter what type of a playstyle you enjoy, there is some hero just made for you. For example, do you feel like your aim is currently a bit shit, but you feel like you can outsmart the enemy? Well, you can go maybe Reinhardt, maybe Winston. Or do you feel like an FPS god and just wish to tear the enemy limb from limb? Well, you can go Widowmaker or you can go McCree. And finally, do you feel like actually winning the game and would like to ensure your monkey brain teammates reach a life expectancy of more than 5 seconds? In that case, you can go Lucio, Anna, or pretty much any of the supports. The choice of playstyle really is up to you. And when you combine all of this with the strategy and communication needed to actually beat a competent enemy team, you've got yourself the virtual equivalent of hard drugs. Easy to get into, but oh so endlessly addictive once you actually get started. 
But unlike my terrible analogy, Overwatch is pretty damn great. And despite playing it for well over 200 hours now, I feel I can easily put in double that amount without ever getting bored. So if you feel like adding a team-based shooter to your repertoire, I fully recommend you give Overwatch a try. It truly is one of the best games out there and, in my humble opinion, the very best game released in 2016. And there you have it, my favorite games from 2016 and games that I am highly likely to continue playing for many years to come. I'm sure many of you might not agree with all or really any of my choices, but I hope you can at least understand why I picked these specific games. Ideally, I hope you can give them a try for yourself as you might just have a sudden change of heart. And speaking of hearts, allow me to end all of this by listing the runner-ups. I.e. a bunch of amazing games that I greatly enjoyed but didn't feel like they belong at the very top for various reasons. So here they are, in no particular order. Thank you guys for watching and if you enjoyed this, or even if you didn't, please do let me know. And with that said, I hope you have a nice day and I will see you soon. See ya!